Arthur Malashevsky here from Footwork Podiatric Laboratory. Today, we thought we'd bring you something special, something a little bit more technical. We are going to be talking a lot more about our design process, our software that we are now utilizing for manufacturing custom-made orthoses, and you'll be able to see how much customization actually takes place in the process of the design, and we'll run you through it. And we've got a very interesting case for you today. We've got a patient who um, suffers from charcot marie tooth disease, or CMT, and we'll talk about the treatment regime, uh, the thinking behind it, the rationale behind it, and how we've been able to um, support that patient's foot with a semi-rigid device. Uh, this is a rigid cave of various foot type with um, a very little perineal function. Um, and we've, through our software, we've been able to, uh, together with the podiatrist who was treating the patient, design the orthotics around the scan and the patient is getting really, really good results. So much so that with a foot type like hers, she's actually um, bushwalking and trekking and so forth. Whereas a couple of years ago, she struggled walking around a supermarket. So, um, like I mentioned, this is a case of CMT or Chaco Murray tooth disease. Um, it's a case where the patient has perineal muscle atrophy. Um, the perineal muscles are frayed, elongated and subluxated. Um, and the patient also suffers from moderate sesamoid pain. This is because, as you'll see from the scan, uh, the first ray is uh, quite rigid um, and, and quite enlarged and plantar flexed, so there's a lot of pressure on the first ray. So the aim would be to um, support the lateral column of the foot, offload it medially, but also take pressure off the first MTPJ um, in order to alleviate, um, make the first MTPJ, func MTPJ function somewhat, and reduce any abductor twisting, which then places pressure on the, on the sesamoids. So this is the patient's foot. You see quite clawed toes because of the muscle contracture, uh, showing as a really cave of various foot type. Um, here we see the patient walking. Um, the design will be concentrated, we'll show you around the right foot uh, for this case. Um, the right foot, as you can see, is slightly worse than the left, um, although the left is, is, is heading that way as well. Um, again, we are looking at a very cave of various, very rigid foot. Um, so what we are looking here is our, our software. Um, the first aim is we take the scan and we balance it out to refoot zero. This is what we do with every cast. Now, this process is done in our lab by our junior podiatrist. Um, every design process goes through three podiatrists, every single one. We then place markers on the heel, on the fifth and the first MTPJ, and we place a marker on the, um, on the arch itself. We then generate a red outline, which is our outline of the orthotic shell itself. And we scan that up and measure it up to the actual shape of the foot. And we customize it to fit it. Uh, so the profile of the orthotic length, orthotic length and width, which um, meets the particular needs of each individual um, scan. Here we are approach, pulling in the arch shape so it matches the scan. As we can see, the uh, first and fifth MTPJs are quite elongated. And then we generate a skeleton structure of the orthotic shell itself. So our process of design has always been the same. It's kind of like uh, we are doing virtual plaster work, but we're not generating the positive model. We are generating the orthotic shell around the cast. The cast or the scan of the foot is always there. Now it's very difficult to see the height of the arch in relation uh, of the orthotic in relation to the scan itself. So we've developed in our design these green vertical walls which show us really well of how, um, how high the arch is in relation to the foot. And from that point onwards, we can drag the lines and, and move them to any, uh, to any place that we want and we'll have maximal control. Looking at the refoot, we can see an X-ray view and we can see how the midline of the orthotic itself um, contours the foot itself, and we can adjust it. In this case, we are then adjusting the lateral column because the patient requires more lateral support, so we are generating a higher lateral, art, uh, higher lateral heel cup. Looking from behind, a bit of a faux pas, grab the um, wrong curve, uh, place it back, replace it, um, adjust the heel cup medial laterally, and we have microscopic controls over the whole design here. The prescription called for six degrees inversion in the refoot, so we're actually inverting the refoot. And as you can see, none of the rest of the device is twisting. Um, the arch height got affected slightly. And here we are adjusting the mid-arch line and reducing the calc inclination angle, 
thus reducing the inversion moment around the refoot. We do not want to invert this foot. We want to have maximum lateral control. Okay, so checking in all planes. Um, we are customizing the lateral borders a little bit more. So there's an uh, enlarged base of fifth, which we need to accommodate in the shell so we don't get any irritation. Again, mass customization, but also keeping in mind that that orthotic's got to be fit, uh, fit into a shoe. And this is again done by podiatrists in our in our lab. So those podiatrists also fit orthotics to patients' shoes. Sho so we know what's called for, what's needed, that the orthotics aren't too bulky, they still need to fit into shoes, as well as being functional. And we constantly liaise and talk with the podiatrists as much as we need to, whoever's prescribing it. So doing a little bit more customization. And this is a process that we go through with every single orthotic design. So looking laterally, we could bring up the lateral column a little bit higher distally, but in this case, we want to, we want to do it with a pad. So just adjusting um, the contours of the heel cup a little bit more. We've got to offload the first MTPJ because the um, distal end of the shelf on the medial side was pushing up on the first MTPJ. So we are putting in a first tray accommodation, which is a little bit unlike a first tray cutout because a first tray cutout will make the orthotic rock. Here, we're actually drawing the whole surface of the shell away from the first ray and allowing the first MTPJ to drop and thus not being dorsiflexed. Again, this is a supportive device, so we need to hug it and contour it and make it fit like a glove. Now, we've generated the shell itself. So from the skeleton, we can go and generate the shell. And when you see the spots poking through the shell, that's extra pressure on the shell. Now, around the mid cubicle, what we saw, as you can see, there's a bit of an artifact um, around the heel, so we're not going to worry about that pressure because that's just a bit of an error in the scan. Uh, but we are just, again, tidying up the shell design, make sure it's nice and straight, it fits into the shoes nicely. And if we are happy with it, a uh, little bit more adjustment under the first MTPJ because it's quite large, we'll make sure it doesn't press on there. And again, we are trying to show the mass customization that goes into the design of an orthotic like that. Okay. So double checking, make sure we've got enough heel expansion. Um, the arch height looks great. The contour looks, looks great. Um, it's morphed. So we'll increase the lateral heel cup for a little bit more lateral support and increase the lateral column a little bit more, okay? We've tapered it down to the fifth MTPJ. We haven't uh, put in a four foot valgus post, intrinsic one, because we are going to do that with extrinsic padding uh, as we can extend that further into the four foot. And you'll see that down a track with the finished device. In order to increase lateral support, we are going to stiffen the lateral column of the, um, of the shell. So the shell itself was two and a half millimeters uh, nylon PA11. We're going to increase the lateral column under the fifth ray by half a millimeter by adding a bar to it. Um, we've hidden the um, our control panel, so we want to keep some of our IP a little bit private. But as you can see, lateral column slightly stiffer. That wasn't thick enough, so we'll go to 0.75 of a mil which will increase it a little bit more. And that should come up three, two, one. There you go, it's a little bit thicker there, okay? So we've stiffened up the lateral column, give it a little bit more support, reduces the need of back filling it with EVA. We have a very low bulk device, fits into any shoes, okay? Contours the foot beautifully. The patient also requires a plantar fascial accommodation. It's a very similar tool, but we use it slightly differently. So a plantar fascial accommodation is put in. That is quite a large one, and the concern in this case was that that will stiffen up the shell too much on the medial side, which we did not want. Also, it doesn't quite contour the natural shape of the foot. It's a little bit too straight. So what we're going to do is make it a little bit more curved, a little bit more C-shaped. As you can see, the plantar fascial accommodation goes from the mid calc tubicle straight to the um, first MTPJ. We've curved it a little bit, reduced the width and the thickness, a little bit lighter increase the flexibility of the shell, not locking it up so much. It is really critical in this case that we allow the first MTPJ to drop so we don't dorsiflex it because there is um, the pathology of sesamoiditis um, and ses or sesamoid pain. And if we dorsiflex it, we will cause the first MTPJ, of uh, cause the patient to then abductor twist because first MTPJ will not be functioning properly. So we need to offload it. Just tidying up the heel cup a little bit more. There's our finished shell. And before we proceed and generate the final design, which should happen around now, 
and lateral stabilizer and I think that's it there's our finished orthotic now as you can see the forefoot valgus lateral column of the forefoot is still slightly off the shell but we'll now fill that up and support it with an extrinsic pad and you'll see how the patient is actually functioning and sitting on the orthotic so this is looking again left side is the medial side right side you see high lateral heel cup lateral stabilizer this orthotic has been worn for a couple of months now so uh, excuse the little bit tardiness of it um, but we wanted to show you a case that's actually been proven and, and, and the patient's actually going hiking and bushwalking with a foot top like that as you can see into the forefoot there is a forefoot valgus pad which supports the forefoot valgus past the distal part of the shell now we can with that you've got to make sure that you can accommodate that orthotic into a shoe so if you've got shoes that cannot accommodate the extra thickness in the forefoot we can then generate that support a little bit more proximal within the shell itself but in this case they were hiking boots and shoes and so forth and as you can see contours the arch beautifully uh, pretty much fits like a glove and again this is all due to the power of what we can do with the software but then what we can do with 3d printing to produce that design as much as we need to and the variable stiffness in the shell the lateral support that we can generate i hope you enjoyed that design which showcased what we can produce with cases such as that